Good aqua. Welcome. This is not going to be a permanent thing, okay? I just wanted to rip contra points off a little bit. It's not yet complete. No one ever tells you how hot studio lights are, people. Today I'm going to be doing astrology content. By the way, thank you so much for your support on my last video about autism. I'm, I'm blown away by it, honestly. I can't even word. It means a lot. I'll link it, obviously there. I swear to god if I'm not in focus it's going to be the most annoying thing in the world because why am I still wearing my Fitbit? That's ruining the illusion. Okay, so today's video I'm going to be reading my own natal chart. In doing so I hope to enlighten you as to how to read your own chart. It's definitely an insight into a person and I use it a lot. So let's go. Also this will help all of you stalkers know a lot more about me so and my Leo moon loves that but this chair keeps moving. By the way, this chair, this beautiful chair, was designed by my sister. I will link her Facebook page down below. She is a genius. So, I usually use cafe astrology. For some unbeknown reason, they have an error at the moment, which I hope they're aware of, where when you generate a chart, it just generates the same chart, and it's not mine. So I couldn't save the image to show you guys here. I got this from astro.com. It's a great resource. If you log in in the top right, you can do a guest user account and that's how you get your chart. And that's the image you're going to be seeing here. Yes, it looks confusing. I promise I will enlighten you. Cafe Astrology is a slightly easier to read, which is why I prefer it normally, but astro.com, this is what you get. I just heard a bird, what was that? So you know the lines, like the red and blue lines, they're to do with the ways your planets interact. I am not going to go into it because it will take about 400 years and also I don't really know what the difference is. Why some red and some blue? Who knows? <laughs> I think it could be to do with squares versus conjunctions or something like that. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. They sometimes generalise the shapes of different charts, like the lines, and apparently I think I'm a bowl shape. My ascendant, or AC, is indicated there. It is in Virgo, just about, and that means I'm a Virgo rising or ascendant. The only way you can find out your ascendant, as indicated in my ascendant video, is if you know your exact birth time. It's to do with the way the sun is rising on the eastern horizon or something. It, it, it's a bit confusing. If you generate your chart without knowing your birth time, which you can do, you won't have your ascendant on it. You will only know where your planets are, but you won't know which houses they're in because your houses can't be generated because they're based on the ascendant. So there are 12 houses, each of them associated with 12 signs. The first house is Aries house, because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So the first house is all about your ego, your sense of self, who you are. Who am I? That's the question. The second house is about money, it's Taurus's house, so it's about possessions, owning things, your own personal finances. Third house is Gemini's house. Gemini's, you, you know, they just, they just don't just shut up. It's about communication, basically. The fourth house is Cancer's house about your home and about your family and about your surroundings, where you feel at home. Fifth house is Leo's house. It's about enjoying life. Sixth house is Virgo. Sixth house is about health and how you stay healthy or any kind of health related problems. Seventh house is Libra. What about then partnerships? <laughs> Seventh house is close relationships, partnerships. Eighth house is Scorpio. It's about finances. It's about divorce. It's about death. Ninth house is Sagittarius, it's travel, it's meeting new people, exotic places. Tenth house is Capricorn's house, it's about work, it's about where you work, how you work, your work ethic, what you want your work to look like. Eleventh house is Aquarius, this is about community, the acquaintances in your life, the colleagues that you barely know. The twelfth house is Pisces house and that's a very ethereal house, yearnings and unexpressed traits. Another thing that confused me when I first tried to read natal charts is that your houses are not all the same size, or maybe they are, it depends what kind of chart you're reading. It just means that you might have less of an emphasis on a particular aspect of your life, I guess. So I am a Libra sun in the third house. <laughs> I am a Leo moon in the 12th house. My Mercury is in Libra and that is in the second house. Venus is in Scorpio and that's in my third house. My Mars is in Scorpio and that's in my fourth house. Jupiter and Sagittarius in the fourth house. Saturn in the seventh. 
depressing. That house is Pisces. And then the rest of the planets you don't really need to know because they reflect whole generations more than yourself. But for posterity, Uranus is in Capricorn, Neptune in Capricorn, both of those are in my sixth house. My Pluto's in Scorpio and that's in my fourth house. And my north node is Libra. Apparently I've got to be more Libra to, to live up to my potential. I'll do a whole video on nodes, it's a thing. With that synopsis in mind, let's go through my chart. So my Libra in the third. That means that my sun or ego is tied to communication, beautifying conversation, making it easier to express myself. Apparently I have a bit of a silver tongue according to every book. It means that you would do well in a career to do with talking or expressing yourself or instruction. The most interesting placement I think in my chart personally is my moon, Leo and in the 12th house no less. Leos are attention seekers and putting your moon in Leo normally means that you're like, hey look at me. The moon is to do with your emotions so I emotionally feel like I rule the roost. This narcissism is completely undermined by the fact that it's in the 12th house because the 12th house, my friends, is about repression. I don't really feel my moon very much and if I do, I usually get very embarrassed. I get embarrassed so easily. I just don't like the attention on me in real life. I am very introverted and shy and don't really want your attention. This placement also means because the moon resembles the mother, you might have an absent mother or it can mean you're very attached to your mother. So Mercury is about how you talk and communicate. Putting it in the second house means that I'm good at talking about money or I'm good at negotiating money. My possessions are often to do with speech, I guess. This is a weird placement. I can't really read this very well. My Venus is in Scorpio. That sounds like a euphemism. It's not in the third house. The Venus sign is about beauty. <laughs> it's about attractiveness pleasure, Libra night things basically, and it's in Scorpio, which means that I'm attracted to things that are very simple, streamlined, not fussy, because Scorpios, although they're dramatic, they're kind of like cut to the chase people. They don't want fuss or frills, and if your Venus is in Scorpio, that's pretty much what it's like. They like more natural looks. The fact that it's in my third house, which is to do with I always forget what the third house is about. <laughs> Interpersonal communication means that, again, I might be very good at explaining things and cutting to the chase and talking in general, apparently. If your Mars is in the fourth house and mine's in Scorpio as well, you're gonna wanna build a nice old home. Because it's in Scorpio, I wanna build a house that's streamlined, to the point, not much mess. Fourth house, because it's about home and about where you belong, pretty much means that you're gonna spend a lot of time at home. <laughs> You're driven to improve your home or to have a home in general. I often read about cults just because I find like cults really interesting. I'm not saying I'm gonna join a cult people. It's kind of like a family thing. I find families of like disparate individuals very interesting. Jupiter in Sagittarius, that's a great placement because Jupiter is Sagittarius is planet. Apparently you're gonna be very lucky. My Jupiter is in the fourth, so again, I'm gonna be lucky in my house, I guess. A lovely little home life. And it's gonna have a lot of pleasurable activities there. <sighs> My fifth house to do with pleasure, fun, blah, 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 has got Uranus and Neptune in it. So apparently I'm going to be drawn to unconventional activities to have fun because that's what Uranus likes. It likes unconventionality and changing things up. It's probably true because one of my favorite pastimes is just like reading my bank statements. I promise I'm fun at parties. I'm not, I never go to parties. <laughs> Neptune is a dreamlike quality. It's about disassociating the Pisces crap. And that's in my fifth house, so apparently I'm going to have unrealistic um, fun. The fact that my fifth house is also in Capricorn is very funny because Capricorn's ideal hobbies include counting money and getting status, and apparently that's what I like to do for fun in my fifth house. The sixth house is to do with health. I haven't got any planets in it, but it's in Aquarius, and Aquarians are innovators, so apparently I'm going to try and change things up a little bit in the uh, health world. Right, because I'm a Libra, I'm drawn to the seventh house, okay? The seventh house is like, it's close partnerships, it's marriage. My seventh house <laughs> has got Saturn in it. Great. And Saturn is about restriction, basically. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a negative placement. Everyone needs restriction in their life, right? In order to get the good stuff. The fact that it's in the seventh means that I'm basically gonna be not very lucky when it comes to relationships. The fact that my seventh house is in Pisces is also interesting because Pisces are dreamy little, the little fish people have extremely unrealistic expectations about relationships and that's also my seventh house reading myself to death. The eighth house, so the eighth house is about 
Um, inheritance, death, fortune. I'm going to do a whole video on the 8th house because I find it fascinating, probably because I've got a lot of Scorpio placements and it's Scorpio's house. It can determine pretty much the roundabout way in which you'll die, so I want to do a video on that. Oh yeah, the 8th house is also about sex. I forgot to mention that. So the fact that my 8th house is in Pisces means that I'm going to be a bit wishy-washy about my finances. I'm probably going to die in something related to water or some very abstract way. I think Kurt Cobain had this placement and he died in very suspicious circumstances that people are still discussing today. It could also be that you die in your sleep, so I kind of hope that that's the, uh, the case. <laughs> it's about inheritances, so Pisces are often quite blessed by nice inheritances because they're so sweet and innocent that they kind of get their way, so hopefully I get some money. And it's about sex, and I'm not gonna comment more on that because this is a family-friendly channel. It's really not. You can probably Google sex and astrology. The ninth house, and the ninth house is in Aries. I'm gonna be drawn to traveling because Aries are very impulsive about traveling. I haven't got any planets here either. Because I don't have any planets here, I feel like it's sometimes more important to read what sign the house is in. All I can think is that I'm gonna have aggressive travel my 10th house, which is about my career and about status, is in Taurus. It loves being at home, decadence, beauty, good quality things. It likes a house. Whenever I read the breakdown of my chart on Cafe Astrology, it says that you're going to be involved in finance or houses. I wish. I didn't go down that route. I studied English at university. 11th house is in Cancer. Oh look, I bypassed Gemini completely. Cancers are very homely. They tend to be a bit frosty and have a shell on them until you learn, get to know them. And apparently that's how I am in interpersonal relationships, acquaintances and colleagues, because this is the 11th house and that's what that means. I can definitely relate to this on an interpersonal level when it comes to my work, because it takes me about six months to get used to any new colleagues. And even then I'm kind of like a bit frosty. And I don't mean to be. Lastly, my 12th house. My 12th house is in Leo and my moon is in Leo so that's why it falls there. Kind of sucks this placement. I really don't like having my moon here. I wish it was in my first house. It'd be magnanimous. Okay thanks for watching. I'm sorry if this was very badly done because I just spontaneously wanted to do this. So my next video what is that going to be? Hmm I'll leave a comment down below what it's going to be because have yet to be decided. Thanks for watching. Please like if you want to. Please subscribe if you want to, if you enjoyed this. I'm sorry if I'm not in focus. I can't see myself. Thank you guys so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye, I guess.